Hello everybody and welcome back to our camper. For those of you who are new to my channel, you may not realize that we recently sold our little log cabin in our small homestead and we purchased property closer to one of our daughters. So we're in the process of building that homestead now, but today's video, I wanted to share with you how to make a healthier self-rising flower. So let's get started. So I'm going to start with one cup of quality unbleached flour. Now I'm going to talk about the salt and the baking powder. So let's talk about the salt to start with. This is just common canning salt, not table salt, because table salt usually will have some non-caking additives in it and quite often it's iodized. So we don't want that. We want just a clean, pure salt. So this is a canning salt. Now I prefer to use my Redmond Real Salt, but it's packed away right at the moment because of being in the camper. My second choice would also be a good pink Himalayan or Himalayan pink salt actually is the way that I should say it, but just a good clean pure salt uh, that is what you want to use. If you have cannon salt, that is perfectly fine. Now our baking powder, we're going to talk about the bad that is in your common brands of baking powder. Now I have noticed that some of them are removing this this particular element, and that is aluminum. There is an aluminum compound that is in some of the common baking powders, and aluminum has been found to have some, probably what I would consider serious health implica implications. Uh, the most concerning to me would be it's linked to Alzheimer's disease. So that's one reason why we want to step away from as much of that as possible if we're trying to have a healthier lifestyle and a health, healthier diet. So we are eliminating the bleaching from our flour, which is a chlorination process usually. We're gonna eliminate aluminum from our baking powder. And also, uh, we're gonna eliminate the chemicals because we're not using table salt. But if you can use the pink Himalayan, Himalayan pink, <laughs> I always say it backwards, or especially the Redmond Real Salt, you're really going to up the nutrition because of the, of the trace mineral, minerals that will be found in those. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to dump my one cup of flour in here, and we're going to sift it just a little bit. Okay, now we're going to add our salt. We're going to go ahead and sift it some. Then we're going to add our baking powder. Now, the sifting step is really important with the baking powder, and you'll see why in just a second. Okay, so the baking powder can clump up like that. Now, let's, uh, let me remind you, too, also on your baking powder that it does have a use-by date. So you want to be sure that you're using fresh baking powder. But if it's close to the use by or the expiration date or, or pretty soon right after, what I usually do, I don't just chunk it, I just increase it. I increase the amount. Now what we're gonna do here to make sure it's blended is where, uh, if you've got a whisk, that would work better, but all my stuff is packed away right now, so we're gonna use a fork. Uh, but talking about the use by date on your baking powder, if it's pretty close to uh, within a reasonable range of that date, you can just increase the amount because it's not a magic number that your baking powder is just going to automatically stop working on that date. It's just going to weaken over time and not be as effective. And many times I have just doubled or, or well, I don't know about doubled, but uh, just increased it what I felt like was a reasonable amount. Now, if it's very, very old, I would suggest just ditch it and start with some fresh. Now, the baking powder that we use um, today is Bob's Red Mill. It's a non-aluminum baking powder that you can find at some of the Bob's uh, Red Mill sections in your grocery store. And But my favorite is my Azure Standard. 
baking powder. It's non-GMO and it also does not have the aluminum compounds in it. So that's my go-to. But a lot of my stuff is just packed away safely so I can't get to it all. So we used what was the easiest to get to. But that's it. That was super, super simple. There, there it is. There is your clean, healthy, self-rising flour. Now, you can proportionately increase this. This was for one cup. If your recipe calls for two, of course you double. Now, if you want to do a whole five pound bag, there is anywhere from uh, a, a little bit over 19 cups to close to 20 cups in a bag, a five pound bag of flour. So you would just proportionately increase your ingredients that way. I would suggest go ahead and figure it for 20 cups. That would just make the measuring easy. And another word about the salt. If you're on a salt restricted diet, mm -hmm. just leave the salt out. Okay, well, I'll be back with you in just a second with some final words. I know a lot of us Southern cooks love our self-rising flour, but if you're on that traditional foods journey and you're trying to build your traditional foods kitchen, now you can have a healthier version of self-rising flour and have the convenience and the time saving of that. So in the near future, I would like to grind some fresh grains and show you how to make your own all-purpose flour from fresh ground grains. And I think we should take it a step further, make our own self-rising flour from that fresh ground flour, fresh ground grains. And then we'll have to try it out making some biscuits or pancakes and just see what the result is. I'm sure it'll be great. If you'd like to see that in the future, drop me a comment below. And I want to thank each of you for taking time out of your day to spend with me and let me share these things with you. If you're not a subscriber, we would love to have you on our journey. And also, if you found value in this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Until next time, don't forget that your Heavenly Father loves you. And we'll see you on the next video. God bless.